Hi, and welcome to the Telenor Partner Ecosystem webinar. This is the first webinar in the whole uh, Partner Ecosystem series. In this webinar series, we will enable you uh, with our ecosystem partners. Uh, we will invite different kinds of partners from the ecosystem uh, through the whole series in order um, to explain what kind of competence uh, they have in their field, but also why we in Telenor have decided to partner with those specific partners in order to enable you with your uh, different kinds of IoT journeys. And also, if you have any questions, feel free to to uh, to send us an email or to contact different companies uh, directly also. So with that said, in Telenor, we are focusing on becoming and be the IoT orchestrator. Uh, to Gay, like everybody knows from, we come from the telco side, we have delivered premium managed connectivity for uh, a century of years and also the ability to delivering value added services connected to that connectivity has been enabling us to be one of the leaders in Gartner's Magic Quadrant. Based on our connectivity customers, uh, we also have been asked to actually uh, come up with new value added services that are fulfill the customer need out there. So for you as a customer, uh, we have both giving feedback locally and globally in different regions. That is the base of why we are entering uh, and launching Telenor IoT Cloud. So Telenor IoT Cloud is an easy uh, device and IoT cloud platform to get you started with IoT, even if you are building your own IoT solution, or if you have several end-to-end uh, -end solutions that you are using today as a customer. And then you can gather all the data into one platform and actually build the top layers based on that. But based on this few elements that we in Telenor are happy to deliver to you as a customer today, uh, we are pretty eager uh, to help you with your whole IoT journey. And that's why we are partnering up with experts when it comes to application and system integration part, uh, when it comes to the hardware module side, and all the way directly to the whole value chain. And this is also how we can create the biggest value for you as a customer, but at least also how we can help you in the go to market and how we can help you grow both on the short term, uh, but also in the long term in existing markets, but also into new markets. So with that said, um, our ecosystem today is built around different kinds of elements. Uh, that is the most important elements we see uh, that our customers uh, locally, but also globally, needs uh, expert elements on, and that's why we have brought on uh, Quicktel. So, well, thank you very much. Thank you very much, Jon Petter, and I'm very pleased to be here and, and present Quicktel. And I think, as you said, Jon Petter, I think when two uh, market leader joins forces, I think that is that will be a very good uh, good start and a good solution for for our customers uh, out there. So um, my name is Patrick Larsson. I'm the Regional Sales Director for Nordics for Quectel. I worked for Quectel for two years now, and um, I have a background since 15 years in different IoT and m 2 m positions. Uh, so I will uh, first of all get you through uh, a couple of, 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 of uh, slide of overview of Quectel. So Quectel founded in 2010. Uh, we are listed on the on the uh, Shanghai Stock Exchange. Uh, so we are a Chinese uh, module manufacturer. We have R and D center. Our main R and D center is in is in, uh, in in Shanghai and Hefei in China. But we also have R and D centers around the world uh, to to get uh, locally uh, closer to uh, to the customers. Um, we have around 2,500 in R and D uh, today. And uh, yeah, we uh, let's go into the portfolio. So the Quectel portfolio. Uh, our uh, portfolio, we, we are coming from the cell module business. And uh, this is um, uh, th th this is where we are market leader uh, globally today. Uh, we also have Wi-Fi Bluetooth modules, both external and, and standalone. 
and external, uh, which can connect to, to our LT or to our 5G modems. Uh, we also have Genesis, external Genesis modules uh, standalone. Uh, and, and these modules, uh, for example, for some specific applications uh, like dead reckoning or, or very sub, sub meter position or positioning, uh, uh, this, this, can be, this can be used. Normally in the cellular modules, you have a Genesis included in, in most of them uh, also already in the chipset, so to say. Um, and also last but not least, the antenna portfolio we have. So we have a full antenna portfolio with, with all different types of antennas, uh, external, internal, embedded, uh, for all different technologies. But what is most important here is that we really have an antenna service and we tune the antenna solution together with the cellular uh, cellular model, uh, module we, we have or, and our customers is using. And this is very important for getting the, the solution, the right solution on the market. We, we see a lot of designs where the antenna is, is uh, actually uh, um, a, a, a very difficult part of the uh, design, so to say. So, so we can help, uh, help you with that as a customer. So um, how can we help our customers? Yeah, definitely we, we help our customers during the whole cycle of for everything from, from the start, from a pre-study phase, analyze your requirements, uh, what type of recommend the right technology for you, as we will discuss more today, um, how to, to place the antenna, what to do with the antenna, and everything around the design, so to say. And when you come to the design, we also do schematic reviews, design reviews uh, for you. Uh, when you go to prototype and testing, we, we can do uh, total testing service for you. We can do pre-certification. So we, uh, we, we really try to reduce uh, time to market for our customers uh, when it comes to uh, first idea to to mass production, uh, which is obviously quite long for, for, for a general uh, IoT project. So the main topic for today is how to, and, 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 and what type of cellular technology to use. And I've just put up three different types here. Uh, we have more different types of, of modules in our portfolio, but I think these three is really taking 90% of all our cases today with customers. And uh, I think we will focus for this for this session for the two uh, kind of low speed or narrow band and middle or, or, or medium speed. Um, obviously we have 5G modules as well um, for router applications and 5G is coming very strongly uh, when, you, when you see the next, next coming years. Uh, there's still uh, on, on very few customers is, 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 is using that, but, but we have a portfolio on that as well. So what is interesting when you choose, uh, when, when you should choose a technology today? Yeah, there is obviously a lot of different uh, questions you need to ask yourself. Uh, you, do you want to roll out region, uh, regionally or do you want a global rollout? What type of technology or fallback or different technologies should you, should you combine? In, 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 in your solution. You have a static solution, uh, which require very low uh, data rates or low performance. You will just send a couple of bytes to, to, to the server, or do you have a moving or tracking application, which is uh, kind of require a different type of, of uh, is it battery powered? Um, is the size important for your, for, your, for your application and so on? So there's a lot of different questions. And I would say that, we cover, uh, as I said, 80-85% of all the new designs with uh, the either the narrowband, so, so technologies like narrowband IoT and, and LTE Cat M, or LTE standard LTE, which is Cat 1, Cat 4. And it's a little bit different depending on your application if you want to, to roll out globally. What is happening on the market today is that, as you Peter said before, 2G and 3G is sunsetting around the world. Some countries have already done it. Some countries are in the middle to, to sunset and some, some countries and operators will, will do it later on. So, uh, but we see that 2G, 3G for a new design, uh, that is not 
uh, then, then you are not future proof enough. So uh, there is a combination. Cat one, cat four is obviously a choice today. If you should roll out globally and you you, you need to have coverage in, in all countries and, and all, all different kinds of countries around the world, then Cat1, Cat4 is, is, a, is a very mature technology, a very mature network. Uh, CatM and, and Urban is obviously on the, on the, on the, on the rollout, so to say. Uh, so, uh, but we see more and more customers going into uh, to that, and that is also kind of, uh, taking over the 2G and 3G rollouts and or, or designs uh, for you. And, and just to um, make this more, what is maybe the most important to think of today when you should roll out a new or starting a new design is to be future proof, uh, to find migration paths to different technologies, uh, easy migration paths, I would say, and also with this in in the same technology. I mean, with the whole semiconductor shortage uh, situation we have today, uh, I think second second source is one of the most used words uh, this year uh, within our industry, and we are really trying to on our modules to find second source for all the co different components we have. Uh, obviously, the chipset is, is always single sourced. So what we have done instead is to find two different chipsets, uh, two different modules with same form factor and the same pinout. So you can be safe that there is at least one, diff one option for you going forward. And also to migrate to other technologies than the one you chose. So for example, if you choose to, to go for an LTKTM or narrowband, you can be sure that there is a migration path to LT Cat One Cat Four in the same form factor and in the same in the same pinning. So you can do kind of a platform and a flexible platform uh, thinking from day one. <clears throat> and just to, as I said before, the antenna service, we have everything uh, you need to be able to do a, a, a very good antenna design, um, and that is crucial for 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 a solution today. Uh, and, and we have seen that uh, in, in different uh, in, in, in different cases. Just to give you two two different use cases, we we have we have done, and this is quite interesting because this is smart uh, uh, battery recycling. It's a static application, so you could use narrowband IoT. Uh, but they also saw that. For the, for the future, they want to use or add more services on top of this. So uh, that might require uh, LT CATM, for example, a little bit higher bandwidth. So they choose the module from us, which have everything included from the start. And they also actually place the application on the, on the, um, uh, on the module to make it uh, smaller in size and, and, and more and, and better, power, uh, better power consumption. Um, and another case is uh, smart streetlight. Uh, and the interesting thing here is that they choose basically the, the, the same technology here, uh, narrowband and LTKTN, and also actually uh, GNSS, uh, which is included in this module. But they saw for different reasons, they saw the, the benefit to go for an external, uh, external uh, positioning module, uh, GNSS module with an in integrated antenna. So uh, there is different paths, uh, different things to consider when you do when you do a new design, and, and we can help you and, and, and perform services and help you to to choose the right technology uh, from from uh, from the start. And that is what I should present today. Uh, I hope this has been a, a, a good session, and and yeah, thank you very much for that. Thank you, Patrick, and a great presentation. And as I said uh, uh, in the beginning, we, we are happy to have you as a partner and we, we see really the value of collaborating with Quicktel, uh, both for our existing customers, but also uh, creating new opportunities together with you, of course. Uh, so I have a follow-up question here, Patrick. We know that majority of the IoT solutions today, uh, especially in Europe, are on based on 2G, right? So we know that... Uh, there's a lot of work going on in 
in the thought process of businesses that are they gonna yeah redesign existing solutions or start developing new one um so when that said that's something that together with quicktel we in telenor uh can advise you on and also be uh your uh consultant on right so we were happy to to help you in that process and bring on experts to make sure that you have the best journey possible when it comes to the migration process and what kind of uh, communication uh, networks you should focus on uh, based on your specific needs. Uh, but uh, when that said, uh, the hype uh, in the market at the moment, Patrick, is the components, uh, is the lack of components, right? So uh, yeah. if you want to give a couple of, uh, yeah, some, some, some timeline around, yeah, maybe an update from your side, but how long lead time should uh, should the businesses out there expect uh, based on the uh, yeah based on the latest update from your end mm. when it comes to yeah, the cyber model? Right? Yes, I, I I can do that. It, it's hard to give any precise information because it's changing for everyone in the business. Uh, basically daily or, or or at least weekly or monthly. So it, it's hard to give a, a, but what we see, a trend we see is that the lead time is increasing uh, month by month, uh, unfortunately. And that, that is that is a big challenge for, for us and a big challenge for our customers. Uh, but again, I think uh, what I said before, uh, especially when you do a new design, you need to think that you have always have alternative and have a, uh, have a kind of a second source, if you call it the second source, uh, to be able, so, so you are more safe to, um, yeah, uh, how, how you can roll out, so to say. But, but it's, it's, it's definitely, we, we don't see that this crisis will be over uh, next year. Uh, I mean, end of next year, hopefully we will see light in the tunnel, but, it's it's very hard to predict at the moment. Uh, uh, let me also comment you on the on the two G and three G sunset, and I think that that is that is true as you said, and I think Telenor also have an official uh, uh, sunset date for this. Um, and the interesting thing is that when a customer is choosing a module today, they they go for they go for let's say they go for a cut down uh, an urban module. Uh, which is the most common uh, module to choose. Uh, many of the customers is still choosing it with because there is an option with 2G fallback. And the reason for that is that they will run 2G as long as there is 2G coverage. And then they will, at the same time, in the meantime, they will have time to really test out the, the CATM network, to test out the functionality. So when the network is sunsetting, uh, they will have a very smooth uh, trans transfer to CATM, for example, which will be the 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 uh, kind of yeah uh, the, the, an easy migration or easy tra transfer to uh, to to another technology in the same module. So you, you can do this seamlessly uh, today, which is I think is very important for our customers. Yeah, I, I totally agree. I think that's uh, one of our biggest value propositions, uh, both uh, why we're working together, right, in, in order to help them in the in the migration journey that uh, a lot of them, uh, a lot of our customers are in uh, in now, uh, either if they are thinking about it or already started, right, uh, but also how they maybe can, yeah, have the right experts uh, from uh, from our partner ecosystem and. Uh, Together with Quicktel, we feel pretty confident we can help them through that journey. So, uh, with that, we'd like to thank you so much. And uh, thank you. The next presenter comes from the design and production uh, element in our ecosystem. We, it's important for us to have the design and production partners, both locally but also globally, in order to help customers and partners, of course in order to optimize uh, existing solution, but also to redesign and design new IoT solutions uh, based on, for instance, narrowband IoT, LTM, but also 5G going forward as well. So with that, I would like to introduce DP IoT. Uh, DP IoT has a long experience when it comes to narrowband IoT and LTM, but also how they can design end-to-end -end solution from scratch based on the customer need in various uh, industries. 
Uh, they are also doing this based on Telenor connectivity, and they are also agile in, in uh, using, of course, Telenor IoT Cloud in uh, the end-to-end -end solution as well. So with that, I would like to introduce you, uh, Einstein. Hello and good morning to you all and uh, thank you for having us and thanks to Kelly and Jon Peter for organizing this. And thank you Patrick. Quectil is uh, someone that we cooperate on on a daily basis using their technology. So we feel very good about this partnership with Telnor and Quectil. Uh, the image that we show now is not accidentally chosen actually. We will come back to that later. We're a company that really likes to focus on sustainable green uh, tech solutions. So very quickly before I continue. DPOT is a Norwegian company that is integrated with uh, Dynamic Precision Group, which is a leading EMS electronic manufacturing company in Scandinavia. And we are headquartered in uh, Oslo, and we have offices in Sweden and Poland, and we have manufacturing plants near Oslo and near Gothenburg in Sweden. And you will see that we have a very complementary partnership uh, as of uh, Quectel, as we have a similar approach in uh, resolving use cases that is shown by Patrick. So I will give a very short uh, talk about our competence and our expertise and uh, also give you a few customer examples. So uh, our core ex expertise, uh, I will like to uh, draw you uh, attention to and remind you what, a, uh, what uh, a complete IoT ecosystem is. So the pyramid in front of you consists of four layers and we have competence across all these layers but uh, of today and this presentation we are focused on the two bottom layers because those are the pillars and foundation of an IoT ecosystem and if they are not handled correctly the ecosystem will fail. So no matter what kind of industry that you are in and whatever you want to achieve you need the competence that are shown here. Uh, and a big part of it is uh, electronic IoT design and wireless and battery technology and cellular, cellular connection. So I'm not going to lecture about this because Patrick did a good job. Uh, what is important to understand is that we can design anything from scratch or we can help re-engineer something that you already have and make it work using, using these latest technologies and uh, with wireless and cellular connectivity. And we have contact with the major manufacturer of chips in the world, which is actually now struggling with their volume production. So lead times are really uh, something that we need to pay attention to. And let me stress, there's no sensor technology that we cannot help you with, or activators if you want to remote control something using these technologies. Um, and the, the green picture that we showed is actually from a greenhouse because we are actually now uh, producing lead or lightning uh, emitting diode based on the cutting edge technology for our customers. And a big part of our competence and services is creating embedded software or firmware uh, that is running on the, on the devices. Because you want to make sure that these programs and these algorithms are optimized for IoT. Uh, and without using too much power to transmit uh, the data and drain the, the battery capacity. So it's a, it's a very important part that the firmware is correct uh, with the algorithms and syntax. Um, so uh, the most important message from us is that we can do rapid prototyping and uh, help you do a fast proof of concept. Because our business model is all about helping you jumpstart a project into your digital journey. That brings me into the next slide, and that is manufacturing. Uh, you know, we, uh, we, we source uh, globally, so we buy components from all the major uh, manufacturers all around the world, and we uh, can do all kinds of, uh, of assembly. That is, you know, PCB assembly or uh, ready to build boxes or whatever you, you need. Um, we have a complete way of doing uh, fabrications and manufacturing. All right, so I'm going to go uh, into uh, an example of a, a product that we join with the Telenor. Uh, we, this is just an example of the R&D that we can do. Uh, what you're seeing here is a multi-purpose uh, kind of controller. It's a very small little PCB. It has Telenor connectivity. It goes to the Telenor IT cloud, all the data. 
and it can connect to any type of sensors and you know it can run on batteries uh, and uh, you know you can do uh, uh, edge computing on it that means that you do some computing before you for before it sends off its data that's just one example of the, you know the building blocks that we can help you with and I'm going straight into a very important customer case for us which is entry and their brand entry smart uh, Entry is a very innovative, innovative uh, company that has taken uh, IoT into facility management, and uh, you know we help them develop uh, tracking systems indoor, so they can track all the machines that are used in cleaning and uh, and its likes, and also uh, you know robots. Uh, the very important uh, aspect and issue for Entry was that they already had machine park for uh, with the, their customers they don't want to you know re-engineer new machines so we just simply enabled these machines to start talking to the iot cloud giving data and we also have from scratch developed a very uh, sophisticated indoor uh, air quality sensor and it has uh, again uh, telenor iot connectivity and you know it's uh, it's bringing the facility management and you know in uh, indoor environment up to the next level. And uh, also, I want to bring out the customer eagle. Uh, simply, someone whose uh, uh, business model is to offer a very simple way of uh, doing logistics on the golf carts, the vehicles. So here uh, is their approach. They wanted to make sure that they could remote control those vehicles and access control and we were able to facilitate that by you know developing a, a device that is connected to their existing golf carts and now they have through the API that we have provided uh, developed an application so the customers you know they can schedule the use of the uh, rental uh, of the um, vehicles and uh, unlock the vehicles this is a very important uh, case where we can show that uh, IoT technology can be used for remote controlling things out there. It's not only about getting data from sensors. And another uh, uh, business case is Dignicare. Um, you know, they uh, they wanted to make sure that they had a, a product that, uh, that you know uh, is um, put on the uh, uh, patient and where they can monitor constantly uh, what's going on with the patient and they used the bluetooth technology and we have helped them bringing the bluetooth connection to the i2 gateway through the narrowband uh, lt and catm uh, and we also can help them bring their uh, for uh, the ble the bluetooth low energy uh, connection from the version 4 which is the old version up to the new version 5 which is very very uh, sophisticated and gives a lot of possibilities so that's you know just giving you an example of how we can uh, approach different uh, use cases and uh, then it's the question what we can do for you uh, you know uh, I think that uh, uh, a very important message is that uh, people think it's very expensive and very cumbersome to go into the IOT market uh, our business model is actually enabling you to start with IoT in a very iterative process, you know, without burning uh, off too much resources, because we can help you setting up the sensors and the infrastructure uh, quite rapidly. And you pay as you grow. You know, uh, it's a very important issue because, you know, uh, it shouldn't be hard to start with IoT. So, uh, again, Thank you uh, a lot, uh, and uh, you know, if there are some questions, Jon Peter, I'd like to you know um, answer that now, or else you know, I hope to seeing you. Thank you, Einstein, uh, and great presentation, by the way. We are so happy to to have you as a partner in our ecosystem, uh, both uh, in, in the Nordics, but also how we can together uh, have a joint value proposition in, for new customers, but also our existing ones. But yeah. I have a follow-up question here. Uh, like you mentioned a little bit, you have you have comp uh, a lot of experience when it comes to designing, producing, and so on. Um, especially based on our one IoT and uh, CATMN or LTM. Mm -hmm. uh, 
So you can actually help our customers in almost all industries today by actually redesigning existing solutions in order to yeah to be prepared for the 2G uh, shutdown uh, globally, but also in order to yeah help them with the right uh, right uh, model vendors, uh, for instance, Quectel or uh, some of our other partners, um, and help them actually in choosing the right solution based on their needs at the moment, but also uh, so they have a long-term uh, solution. Yeah, I mean, uh, I think I, I pointed that out that, uh, you know, we're, we're, we have, uh, as engineers, you know, we have a, a, an approach that we can go into any kind of industry because it's all about connecting devices and uh, engineer and, uh, you know, uh, create electronics that, uh, you know, uh, has, uh, is resolving these kind of issues. Uh, so, yeah, we were confident on that and we have four years experience now with the narrow band. Uh, you know, we were one of the first players with Telnor. So, we, we have learned a lot over the things that uh, you know our customers should not uh, you know um, uh, fail in. Uh, so we can yes choose the exact the, the the right chips from the right manufacturers, and that's why we have an open approach. We are not you know uh, bound to any kind of uh, uh, manufacturer and and. Uh, and solutions. So uh, I think that uh, coming to us will give uh, people uh, real freedom and uh, our 50 engineers uh, has all their skills in helping uh, you get uh, exactly the kind of product that you want. Perfect. Thank you so much, Isan, again. And as we said, uh, we're looking forward to work with you uh, going forward as well. Yeah, we do. Uh, we uh, we love to uh, work with Telnor, and uh, uh, we're we're going to be a good partner. Okay, take care. So, uh, with that said, you have we have now covered uh, two important elements in our uh, IoT ecosystem. Uh, it's really important for us to also uh, show what kind of value uh, our partners can bring, but what kind of joint value. Uh, you as a customer get uh, out of the uh, partnerships, of course, uh, and we we are eager to to work with the partners in order to create value for you uh, as a customer, but also in how we can help you with your IoT journey going forward and the transition that we are in, especially when it comes to the change of the communication barriers, but also how we can help you uh, with the experts in all fields of the end-to-end -end solution. In the future webinars, we will also cover the uh, other uh, elements of the ecosystem, and we are uh, then going to enable different kinds of partners into these webinars. So please stay in touch if you would like to know more about what kind of other value you can get from the partner ecosystem, but also how Telenor can be your, be your um, IoT orchestrator and how we can actually help you in the whole IoT journey. And with that, we would like to thank you so much for uh, attending uh, this webinar today. But also, we would like to, uh, if you have any questions or uh, would like to get to know more about our ecosystem partners or Telenor, of course, you can you can drop me an email and I will uh, be happy to answer it uh, as fast as possible. So with that, uh, thank you so much and have a nice day.